each and every single person in this room has WhatsApp, has IG, has FB, yeah. is going to have these gadgets, yeah. or even if they don't have these gadgets, they are already consuming and using Meta products. So my question yeah. now goes to, what is Meta AI? So Meta AI is very similar to ChatGPT. Uh, what it is, is it's actually enabled in some African countries. I think Uganda is one of them. Uh, it's going to come to you guys. And Zambia. And Zambia. It's <laughs> going to come to you guys. Uh, but usually you want to test it in a smaller market, then bring it to one of the most active markets in the world. <laughs> uh, so it's coming. What is different from us is like, for example, ChatGPT 3.0 is free for everyone. ChatGPT 4.0, you pay for it. I don't know what the rate is. It's about $20 in the States. A month. Same here. Uh, so what Meta AI is, is similar to ChatGPT 4.0, but it's free. And when you open your browser at the top, it's going to be Meta AI. So you can ask any question. You also have an interface where you go to metaai.com and you're able to ask it the same questions that you'd ask ChatGPT without having to enter your credentials or information. It just asks you for your age. Uh, sometimes it might ask location or this, some, you know, but you don't have to be a Facebook person. You don't have to be a meta products person. You can ask it independently. Of that. So that's sort of like the difference between and the correlation with what you currently have in the marketplace. Okay. Here's where the game changer starts coming. So stage one, there's actually a website. You said the website would be, it is Meta? Com. MetaAI.com. Just yes. first check his mic. Just say something. Uh, MetaAI.com. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's also, uh, when you go to your browser, when you're asking the question, you'll also find it at the top of that. So let's go back to that question. So to log on to Meta, yeah. as ChatGTP, currently you can log on through Meta. AI. Yes. But here's the game changer. Meta owns platforms which have billions of people. What is the correlation between Meta and this AI and these platforms? So it's an enabler. Again, going back to when you're posting something, you can ask it to post a better version of the same message. If you're generating something, let's say I want to generate an, an image of us in this room, it can generate that for you. For reels, reels are going to be on fire. You know, you can say, hey, this is what kind of like the video, put it in there, it helps you enable that and makes it a little bit easier for you to format it the right way. Yeah. Alex has said that in such an easy way. But I want us to, to, to dwell a bit here for you to understand the magnitude and the impact and what this looks like from a usability case. Are you a graphic designer? This is how this thing is going to affect your job. I can take a picture here of Alex, put it on Instagram, and not put it the same way. I can say, Meta, turn this, I can write as the prompt on Instagram as I'm put, posting the photo and say, make this picture an event poster. And the details I want on that thing is change his shirt to black. I don't like this. He's, he's a bit casual. Make him formal. And the, and the picture that will be posted will be according to my prompts. Are you understanding? Now we take a picture and we post it. And the picture that we, we take is what we post. I can now alter that picture in any way that I want. I can say he looks lonely. Let him, let him look like he's sipping a mojito by the beach with that same photo. And it can happen. I don't like him holding the, the position in which he's holding the mic. He's held the mic. Ah, these guys here who are photobombing. <laughs> these guys who are photobombing, remove them. I can, I can prompt it to be anything that I want it to be. Now, remember, Meta also own WhatsApp. WhatsApp started as WhatsApp. We saw the evolution of WhatsApp to WhatsApp to business. We saw the evolution of WhatsApp to business to WhatsApp API. WhatsApp API is, for example, where Safaricom use Zuri and chat where you're able to have conversations. Now we are going to see WhatsApp have API. It means you can remove your WhatsApp and there'll be a search bar. He actually has this version right now. And this version is open to the states. Give, just talk a bit more on this space because I want people to understand this technology is there now. Yes. So, so everything that Richie speaks about, yes, it's present. And it's actually able, you're able to do exactly everything that he's talked about. But I also don't want us to get stuck on a product 
by a company. Mm. I want us to just think about the capabilities that AI will bring to all of us. So right now you have ChatGPT, leverage it to the best of your abilities. Any other, you know, AI capabilities that you have within your systems, SAP could be one of them, it has an AI component to it. Leverage it to the best of your abilities. You have Embacadero when you're doing rapid SQL. Leverage it to the best of your abilities to be able to write your code. So I just don't want us to get stuck in that. But to Richie's point, yes, Meta has its products and they're embedded within the product, uh, whatever we provide, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and 15 other different services that we have. So do you guys have Facebook dating? No? Okay, it might not be one of them that's enabled here. But at the same time, what I'm saying is that in the background, yes, the tech is enabled to make your life a lot easier. From the mentality perspective. Oh, gee, you can check, try out <laughs> Facebook dating. <laughs> The connection is going to be on fire. <laughs> and all the bachelors in the house said, oh. <laughs> So, I love what he said. Uh, I'm using the meta products as an example for you to understand this. But the mentality then needs to be, how can I do this faster? How can I, The excuse that I don't have money no longer exists. Because the question that you can then use AI to answer is, how do I do this now? Um... There is a product, there's, there's something that I'm subscribed to called there's an AI for that. Because there's an AI for that. So the moment you think about something, there's an AI for that. So what he's talking about are, yes, the, it costs a lot of money, but there's people in their houses, 19 and 20 year olds in their rooms, creating products that are going to rival with these guys. Where these guys come in is to snap them out because they have the money to buy. <laughs> but what I'm trying to just say is, there is an AI for that. So he's, he's, he's right. Don't limit this thing. Don't lock it to just thinking about the meta products. Anytime you ask yourself, how can I do this cheaper, faster, less expensive, reach a market that I've never reached, there is an AI for that. Yes. Just to add on to that. So yes, we, you know, we look for the best brains in the world. But at the same time, what we also do is that we have hackathons within the company. We say, these are good ideas, and these ideas come from folks. So for the senior folks that you called out in the room, uh, this is a message to you. Source some of those ideas from the teams that are working on the ground. So Gen Zs are the ones who are going to come up with some of these ideas. It might not be the old seasoned guy in the corner office. The Gen Zs are the people that you want to curate. You want to be able to enable some of these capabilities within the company ecosystem so that they can be able to use them well. Remember, they grew up with this technology. So the best way that you can is just curate the, the ideas that are coming from them, and this is going to be a game changer. Okay. Um, I just want us to quickly touch this. If there's open AI, there's something called Llama. What is Llama? So, so Llama is equivalent to ChatGPT. And it's what's behind Meta AI. Okay. Simply put, uh, we are growing really fast in terms of capabilities because uh, we have the resources and we have the reach that we have. I think Meta overall reaches 4 billion people around the world. And that's my value proposition in the office. Every single day I wake up, I say I'm protecting the data for 4 billion people around the world. And providing the capabilities or making sure management has the capabilities to provide you the services that you need. Because you've seen when there's a disruption, you know, you're shifting the thing and you're like, Mazi, what's up? I find your job. <laughs> you know, so I want to make sure at least management has the right level of capabilities to do that. Okay, let me then ask this. What does the job market look? This is a big question that everybody always asks when it comes to AI. What does the job market look and the f when it comes to AI? The thing that you always hear is AI is taking our jobs. In my version, I believe that's true. Uh, but explain it in, in, in your perspective. AI, what jobs, AI? So 